just finished my second ever 3D printed helmet, this time an Iron Man helmet. Let's talk about all the things that went right, all the things that went wrong, and what I learned from this time and how you can learn from it too. For a little backstory, the first 3D printed helmet I ever made was a Mandalorian helmet, not this one. I actually had done a helmet swap with Jake DeRosa where he made me one and I made him one. It literally took me a year to finish because I would mess things up so bad and be so discouraged and be like, I'm just not finishing this. And then finally I would pick it back up. This time around when I was making the Iron Man helmet, I was on a strict deadline. My dad's birthday was coming up and he had saw this helmet sitting in my maker room and had mentioned how he always had wanted an Iron Man helmet. So on a two week notice, which kind of felt impossible, I decided to try my hand at it. I've already given him that helmet, which is why I won't physically have it in this video, but I have a lot of footage for when I was making it. Starting out with picking a file, particularly for things like Iron Man and Mandalorian helmets, there are so many places where you can find this. In the playlist below, there's a video where people make a ton of different recommendations where you can get the quote unquote best Iron Man helmet file. Now I had used the files from Budwin. While the helmet itself did look great, there was one thing that I wish was different about the file that I had picked, which was that for the helmet portion and the face mask portion that kind of fit together, a lot of files have spaces already printed out for magnets to sit inside for them to join which means I kind of had to fashion together this weird Velcro type situation. So had there been those little spots for magnets pre-assembled in that file, it would have made my life so much easier and the end product probably would have looked better. Now, as for actually printing the file, when I had made my first Mandalorian helmet, I did not have a printer at the time that was large enough to print this all in one piece, which means I had to print this in six separate pieces and then plastic weld them all together, which was a huge pain in the ass and caused a lot more work in the end process of this mask. Luckily, an Iron Man mask is small enough to fit on a standard printer like a Bamboo Labs printer or an Ender printer without having to slice it into multiple pieces. So while you do not need to run out and buy a large format printer, if you're getting into this and you know that you're going to be somebody who's going to make helmets over and over and over again, having a large format printer may be something that is kind of helpful just because it made that process so, so much easier. That brings us into the process of filling and sanding this helmet. Now, when you get the helmet right off the printer, especially on this top portion up here, there's going to be a ton of visible layer lines. I had just interviewed Juan Makes on my podcast, Meet the Makers. Go check out that episode. And he had detailed his process of initially sanding the print, then using UV resin to fill it, and then going in with multiple heavy layers of filler primer. I used this method and it was so much better than anything else that I've ever used to fill my prints before. I do detail this process a little bit in my videos, but please go check out Juan Makes videos. He is the master of this and he'll really show you how to use this technique right. With that said, there were a couple big mistakes that I made during that process. So for one, I had it outside in the process when I was spraying on the filler primer. The only problem is I left it outside too long, particularly for me living here in Arizona. The weather is hot and the sun is hot and it caused my prints to warp slightly. So even though it may seem like a small time and not a huge deal, try to take your pieces out of the sun and out of the heat and just elements in general after you have finished spraying it. Like don't leave it out there for days at end. Additionally, and particularly when I was doing the UV resin process, on the Iron Man mask, you have a lot of really fine lines like these. And what I had found that I had accidentally done is I was putting on resin too thick into those fine lines. And by the time that I got done with all of my layers of resin, all my layers of filler primer, a lot of those lines had gotten muddy. Now I did go in with a little, I call them sanding swords, um, but I did go in with like those little files and try and crack out all of that extra UV resin. But during that process, if you can kind of pre-scrape out some of that extra resin perhaps, I think you'll get a lot cleaner result in the end because for me, a lot of those fine lines just overall got gunked up. Now again, I had been on a tight timeline of two weeks, which actually isn't that tight of a timeline had I just used my time appropriately. But because I had procrastinated, that timeline really came back and bit me in the butt when I got to the point of painting, which made my painting process kind of sloppy and just not the best result. So in my case, I sprayed on a coat of black then a coat of gold, and then multiple, multiple coats of the red metal cast, which is super thin and can really run very easily. And then in the end, I had topped it off with a polyurethane top coat. If you watch this whole process in the videos, you'll see it, that I was only left with one day to paint before I had to actually bring the helmet to the party. That day just happened to be super unusually windy outside. This made spraying down my paint almost impossible. Metal cast paint in particular is super thin and it was just blowing everywhere aside from my helmet. Partially out of frustration and partially out of necessity, I started getting closer than I should have to the helmet and I was laying down way too thick of layers of paint onto the helmet. So moral of the story, definitely leave yourself more than enough time to paint, leave more than enough time in between your different paint coats for them to dry, and as light of coats as you can possibly get is going to give you the best end result. Additionally, I had waited until some of my pieces were fully painted to glue them onto the helmet. 
This was also a mistake. I specifically had used 3D glue, which kind of bonds the plastic pieces together, but because it is such a intense type of glue on there, it actually had melted some of my paint off of there, causing not the best result in the end. So again, try and combine your pieces before they are fully painted and fully done. Otherwise you're definitely going to get some blemishes there. While I don't think it's impossible to get a perfect helmet on your first try, I also think in the process of doing these helmets, just be realistic with yourself and be kind to yourself and be okay with the fact that your first couple helmets may not turn out perfect and that is totally okay. Done is better than perfect. I'm sure there was a million other small details that I missed along the way, but hopefully some of those tips help you on your helmet journey and excited to see how these tips help me with helmet number three coming very soon.